When the agnus is contracting to slow down the force of gravity, the body part is moving in the same direction. Okay, so now I'm doing an eccentric direction. And probably B is going to say the agnus is contracting eccentrically. eccentrically. Okay, so when I con uh, contract eccentrically, the body part's moving the same direction as gravity. Okay, so my radius and ulna are moving in the same direction as gravity, which happens to be down toward the center of the earth. All right, number three. When the agonist is contracting isotonically, the antagonist is doing nothing. Right. Doing nothing. <laughs> Quiet. Relax. <laughs> right. Remember, if I am contracting my biceps and I contract my triceps, what happens? I'm going to get a co-contraction. Mm -hmm. So if I'm using my biceps, my triceps are quiet. Right? No muscle contraction. Relax. Quiet. That's the point. Nothing. <laughs> Doing nothing. That's, that's is, that, is that called reciprocal inhibition? That is reciprocal inhibition. Okay. When I use one muscle, its agonist or its antagonist is reciprocally inhibited. While sitting, raise your arm through full flexion range of motion. Okay, what are the agonists? Flexors. Flexors. <coughs> More. Oh, no. Shoulder flexors. Okay. <laughs> Okay, shoulder flexors, all right? And then uh, while sitting, I'm going to lower my arm to anatomical position from full flexion. The agonists are shoulder, shoulder flexors. Still shoulder flexors, okay? Concentric shoulder flexors. Eccentric shoulder flexors. Okay, now I'm going against gravity. Okay, I'm through full range, and I want my patient to do this, okay? I want him to come up slowly, and I want him to come down slowly. Okay, come up slowly. If I kick in my extensors, do I come down slowly? No. No, I come down fast, okay? So if I go from zero to 180, concentric shoulder flexors, eccentric shoulder flexors, okay? So I'm gonna lower back down. Okay, think about it in this manner. As I go from here to here, what is my effort force? What's my effort for? Shoulder flexors. Okay, so the shoulder flexors are causing motion, right? What's my resistance force? Gravity. Gravity. Okay, so I now have, still have a third class lever, right? So here's my axis, okay? My effort force is my shoulder, my anterior delt probably primarily, which is attaching somewhere down here, right? Okay, so I have my. Effort force in the middle, my resistance force on the end, third class lever. Okay. Here on the end. Okay. And now my effort force and my resistance force are changing. Right? Okay, so now what is my effort force? Gravity. Gravity. Now what is my resistance force? The shoulder shoulder flexors. Okay, so now I have A R F second converted to a second class lever. Okay. So it's still concentric, concentric shoulder flexors, eccentric shoulder flexors. So when I give my patient a weight and I say I want you to do this and I want you to lower it, all I'm doing is strengthening the shoulder flexors. Okay. All right. Number. Now moving on to letter C. All right. So what is the difference? I go to a supine position. Okay, so now if I go from here to 90, right? Which way is gravity pushing me? That way. Okay, when I go from here above, now which way is gravity going? Okay, so gravity changes when I hit 90 degrees. Okay, so when I go from here to 90 degrees, what muscles am I using? Okay, concentric or eccentric? Concentric. Okay, I'm going against gravity. I'm doing acceleration activity, so I'm going concentric contraction of the shoulder flexors. Okay, now I'm going to go from here to here. What muscles am I using now? Shoulder extensors. But now I'm going with gravity, so I have to use my eccentric shoulder extensors. Okay, so I go through full range. Right, now I'm going to go into the reverse. I'm going to go from 180 to 90. Shoulder extensors. 
extensors. Okay, when I, I'm in full flexion, I'm now going into extension against gravity, concentric shoulder extensors, okay? Eccentric shoulder flexors. I thought you were going, since you're going against gravity, it's the reflection. I'm going with gravity now, remember? Gravity's going that way. That's what I'm saying. When you're now I'm going up, against gravity. That's not flexion. No, that's, that's this that's is flexion. Extension. Return from flexion, yeah. extension. Yeah. Got it? So it's concentric no, extension. Oh. That you're like, oh, that's extension. Oh. Wow. Okay? So first 90 degrees, concentric contraction of the shoulder flexors. Concentric extension. Eccentric contraction, contraction, contraction of the shoulder extensors. Okay. Concentric contraction of the shoulder extensors, eccentric contraction of the shoulder flexors. So if I want to strengthen both my flexors and extensors, perhaps I want to do it supine. Because if I do it standing, I'm not getting both. Does that make sense? Or I change my range when I'm supine. Okay. Which one was this? Which one was this? Well, it's, it's letter D. D just asks, it, it didn't go into quite that much detail, but there is another another example in your book that goes into more detail. So letter D, while supine, return your arm to the anatomical position from full flexion. During the first half of range of motion, which should be here 180 to 90 degrees, the agonists are the extensors. And during the second half of range of motion, the agonists are the flexors. So D is extensors and We went into a little bit more detail. All right, y'all probably need a break, right? All right. Take